Live from the nation's capital, it is the Patriot League men's soccer final as the American University Eagles play host to the Colgate Raiders. Alongside Keith Bassing, I'm Nick Pappas to bring you today's action and a big one for both teams. Yeah, the automatic bid on the line in the Patriot League right now. Colgate has been to this five times. They're 5-0 and in it. It's been a while for American University. The last time in 2004, they've had four tries, trying to get the monkey off their back today. And we'll take a look at the bracket and how the teams got here. The Eagles playing one game against Bucknell, winning in double overtime with a brace by Jake Garcia. And for the Raiders, it was a 3-1 win in the semifinal against Loyola. Take a look back at that BU America, or Bucknell American game. And it was Panos Nakids crossing to Jake Garcia with two and a half minutes left in regulation to tie it up. And then again, Garcia put it in the back of the net to win in double overtime. And in the semifinal between Loyola and Colgate, Ethan Cutler got scoring started early inside the first 15 minutes of play. And then Zach Pagani gave the lead early after a Loyola penalty tied it up. They saw that one out to win 3-1 and punch your ticket here to the final today. Some players really on fire in this tournament so far. Yeah, if you look at Colgate, you have to look at Ethan Cutler. Ethan Cutler has nine goals on the year, four of those goals in the Patriot League tournament. That's a record. This guy is a go-to guy. They may have 11 guys who have scored goals, but Cutler's the guy they're going to. American University is going to have to look for him the entire time. For American University, of course, they've got Panos Nakid. Panos Nakid is leading the league in assists, nine assists, and as we look at Panos this guy took over the game the other day against Bucknell to turn the game around. Cross in for the assist for Garcia. Watch him. He is an exciting player playing his best while American University is also playing his best. You go back to, by the way, the last time these guys played, 2011, the Patriot League final right here at American. It was two great goals for Colgate. Michael Garza and this diving header to score the first one. And then an unbelievable individual effort here by Michael Reedy for Colgate. It took two great goals for Colgate to take this game in the Patriot League championship. American American University, look at the change that around today. And as we said, a big one. Both teams looking to punch their ticket to the NCAA tournament. We'll be back after this on the Patriot League Network. And we are back here on the Patriot League Network and a big one on hand, as we said. Take a look at the stats for the two teams. And it was, it, as we look at the stats in the over the course of the season, 38 goals for American, 30 for the Raiders. And, and 306 shots out shooting the Raiders to 299. And we are ready to get match action underway. Take a very quick look at the starting lineups first for the Raiders. As we said, the main man for them definitely going to be Ethan Cutler. And one slight change as they bring in Bruno Scudari in for Troy Mupen. And a very early corner as we take a quick look at the Eagles starting line. Panos Nakid up top, bring Mark Fasano in into the midfield. Yeah, that was the move that uh, Coach Todd West did at halftime of the Bucknell game, putting Nakid up top. Made a huge difference in the game. We'll see what happens today. But now they got to defend the first restart of the game. Right foot service of Stroud. Numaligan, it's off the bar, Zach Pagani. That was almost a an early goal, and that would have been a huge shakeup for the Eagles to concede inside the first minute of play. Well, you know that they had the shakeup against Bucknell the other uh, yes uh, Friday. Sorry, when uh, Bucknell scored just nine minutes into the game, and uh, right here, you know, right from the start down into there, and a free restart for uh, for Colgate. And you got to take that Colgate has to feel that's one of their best chances uh, to score. They got, again got a couple of big guys in there, and I think AU dodged a bullet. Let's see if they can now get things going the way that they need. To to, to put a stamp onto this game. They're playing at home. Uh, they're playing two games in the last few days. This is Colgate's third game in six in six days. So big difference there, especially as the game goes on. So hey, you can't give up anything early. Oberg goes down. It's a free kick for the Raiders. It's going to be Stroud again to serve this one. He served a very good ball about 30 seconds in off that first corner. Well and driven easy for Holdsworth to clear away. Skidari is going to hit that one up. Cherry able to settle that Neumann now. Tommen, defensive player of the year, hits that one up. 
or one two and Sherry takes that one right off the feet of Scudari. You get the opening minutes of games like these and teams you know kind of feeling themselves out there's obviously a lot a lot of energy out there and uh, both teams need to figure out what it is it's going to take to be successful they colgate you know they rely really on the entire team you know they have to have a belief in each other they obviously have a very good goal scorer up top with ethan cutler you know if they give au time and space all right uh, then au is going to take over this game because that's when they're very good when the teams aren't sharp defensively and uh, you can beat you in so many different ways and panels knock eat up top i roll with these guys that can go at players and open up the defense individually. Well, it'll also be very interesting to see how Colgate responds. They are a, they do run a 3-5-2 and against a team with the pace of the Eagles, it could be a little bit of a problem defensively. They're really going to need those outside mids to get back. Yeah, and I think that's a real key to their game is the defending wide. Neumann sends that one in to Fene. Ludwig. Coach West telling Tim Neumann to be aware of Cutler is, as they want to know where he is all the time because if you give him a second to breathe, he's going to find space. And I think it's so important that they stay organized in the defense while they're in the attack, and especially with a guy like Cutler. And that's, that's exactly what Coach West was yelling out to Neumann. And Baluku down the right side, service in early. Dale Ludwig diving header over the bar. And as we saw a few years back earlier, a diving header was the first goal for the Raiders. Ludwig trying to answer that with one of his own. Uh, exactly. And a good ball in there. And actually, it was isolated fairly well. Ludwig made a good run out of the midfield. Now, those runs are so hard to mark. And you see people like him running into the box there out of the midfield. You know, they got a good chance of being open. Obviously, Ludwig, uh, you know, arguably the best on the team in the air, although usually he's out jumping people despite his size. That time, a diving header. Garcia heads out forward. Goal scorer on Friday with both goals. That one rides past O'Neill. It's going to be sent long looking for Cutler, but Garcia able to head away. Stroud now. Overlap by Stroud. Decide to go into Cutler's feet instead. Big switch looking for Harris. Able to keep the play alive. Fene with good pressure. Cuts that one back. Stroud at the top of the box. Big appeals for a penalty there, but it looked like Stroud was always going down. Yeah, I think the appeals came from the Colgate fans more than anyone on the field. Cutler, Ethan Cutler, and cleared away by Garcia. He put it under Belanger, but Garcia there to clean it up. Yeah, and that shows the danger of Cutler there, and he may well have been offside. That was very close, but they played on, and of course, Americans still reacted well, because you may not like you know, the call, but you still have to react to it. And uh, again, that's kind of two, two bullets that they've dodged now early in this game. Well, the Raiders definitely looking for some vengeance after losing here on Reef Field early in the season. 3-0 the count in that game. Long throw in and out for a corner. Of course, that was the first Patriot League game of the year as well, and that 3-0 win for the Eagles. Stroud, again, going to be the kick taker. And take a look back at the championship profile, 1-6-1 one, and one in the final. They won in 01 and 04 and have not won one since, despite being 2-6 since then. Exactly. And yet Colgate, you know, what, what a record for Colgate, Nick. Yeah, Colgate did win back in 2011, 2-0 here. And they've won all of them that they've been to, dating all the way back their first in 1992, a 1-0 double overtime win. Belanger takes that one right off the head of Umalegi and, and the big one there. And uh, the clock stopped, and it's going to be Pagani to go in the book. Yellow card for him after he stuck a foot out as Belanger tried to hit that one out. Yeah, it really didn't make sense for him to do that. You know, he picks up an early yellow from referee Michael McBride. Saying, you're just not going to do that in my game, he says. 
and it will be a free kick now for the Eagles right outside the 18. Well, that's that's a good thing for the Eagles, honestly. It was a little bit dangerous of a play, but, I mean, you obviously want as many guys in the book early on because then it puts the pressure on for the rest of the game. He has to be, be careful the entire game now. No, he definitely does, and we saw that the other day when uh, Dale Ludwig got a card relatively early in the game that we didn't think really was deserved. And Baluku serves that one in, and Ricky Brown off his line to come get that one. It was not quite through to Iroola. No, it wasn't. And I think the issue there is you only had uh, Naki and Iroola in the box on that. And, you know, as soon as Mbaluku gets going down there, you know there's a decent chance he's going to get around the turn the corner and get across. And I mean, he needs to get more players in the box when that's happening. Can't find Harris there and a throw in for the Eagles. Michael Cherry sends that one all the way back to his goalkeeper. Belanger's had some work to do early on in the opening five to ten minutes. So he's making up for zero work to do against uh, Bucknell in the second half in the overtime. Bucknell was not able to get a shot off uh, there. America just dominating after going down one nothing and showing great resilience to score with two and a half minutes left and then win it in overtime. Now Key Dembaluku, Key Dembaluku again with space on the right side. And it's a goal Max. kick for Ricky Brown. Ace it, Max. Well, a little bit better. We said one of the keys for Colgate is going to be their wide defending and being able to defend one-on-one -on -one and get cover for the defending as well. And then I think uh, we just see it there. Obviously, it's one of the keys for AU. They're trying to get the ball out wide and get in behind Colgate. So game of opposites always, and, and it would be a real challenge uh, for Colgate's defenders for the entire 90. Eagles with a big opportunity now after that big header sent up the line and out for a throw. Oberg really was the heart of the Raiders team against Loyola the other day. He was, seemed to be everywhere on the pitch, and he seems to be doing the same here today. Well, he is. He's just a sophomore. He's a local, local player. Went to Sidwell Friends locally uh, from Bethesda. And this guy covers a lot of guys. Does a lot of that work for the other players as well. Great work ethic. You know him as long as his partner in the in the midfield there, Colin O'Neill. He is also very familiar with Panos Nakid and Dale Ludwig, along with Jake Garcia. The four of them were all on the DC United U23 team this summer. So it's one of those times you have to set friendships aside and <laughs> just get on with the game. Get out of get in. Irola. He's got to run, try to turn the corner on Umaligian, who, but it's just a little bit too big of a touch by Joe Irola. I think you know, Irola's got to keep doing that when he's in in that corner. They just keep trying to take. Look, he actually drew almost three players out. He gets that ball a little bit further past Umaligian, and then he has he has three of the defenders out of the box and some good space in to play the ball. Fane and Fasano not on the same page, and Tommen just going to hit that one up. It'll be Tim Neumann, the first one, too. He's going to see it out for the throw. Tim Neumann, the outstanding freshman from Germany, and it was said he just plays so much above being a freshman. The maturity he brought in right from the start, adjusted to the pace of the, the college game, and that just had a tremendous opening year for him. Ludwig takes that one off the chest of Stroud. That's Mbaluku again. The Eagles really getting a lot of opportunities down the right side with Kibu Mbaluku today. Scored his first goal of the season on his senior day. One of two senior days here for American. They kind of had one for the internationals and one for the rest of the players just due to some plane tickets. <laughs> he scored that one against Holy Cross. Well, I guess it's every time you're playing at home at this stage in the season, you could call it a senior day as well. They're hoping to extend that into the NCAA tournament. Half-hearted clearance. Stroud gets a little something to it. Tim Neumann and Cutler going at it. Cutler with a little flick on. They fall in behind for Ludwig. Tommen gets up to it. Ludwig comes away with it. He's going to send this one back to the right back, Chris Finney. Service in. And Fasano can't quite climb for that one, as you wouldn't really expect him to either. 5-8. Back heel for Neumann. Tim Neumann's service. And Beluka was up for it, but it was cut out just in time by Tommen. 
Hanos Nakid shot into a couple of defenders. The Eagles really keeping the pressure on early. And Scudari just has to put that one out for a throw. Yeah, uh, a great couple minutes for the Eagles keeping the pressure in on that end, the way that they were hoping to start the game out. They dodged a couple bullets, and you know I know Colgate is feeling this pressure right now. Just need to get a little more movement in the box when they see these crosses coming. A lot of a static uh, play in the box by the guys waiting. Long service. Simbaluku heads it back in. Ricky Brown off his line to pick it up. Oh, it's that kick, it's going to be Chris Finney up for the Eagles, but Harris heads it past him. It's good pressure by American keeping that ball in there. They got to get a hold of that on that touch. Flag up for offside. Offside there, and and you know, watching Ethan Cutler off the ball when even when uh, American has the ball in the attack, watching he's just looking for these spaces. It really makes it difficult for the defenders to you know, to mark him. He's always in these little, little uh, zones and slots between the defenders and coming off of them, and makes the defenders have to make a decision: are they going to go into the midfield with them or hold? Well, he's one of the many players that could definitely make it to the next level as i talked about the other day with bruce murray on air tom and heads that one away the eagles have a few of their own but it's for the raiders definitely a powerhouse and with him ethan cutler he could be get an opportunity at the next level yeah i think you're right i think he has a lot of the things that, uh, that pros will be looking for he'll certainly get a chance and see if he makes the adjustment Well, he's got good feet, but all, uh, on top of the ability to get in space, exactly like you're talking about. Carl Brown hits that one up, chested pass, looking for Scudari by Cutler. Holdsworth tries to find him, but can't quite get it in. That was excellent turn in the midfield by Holdsworth. Head gets up and he sees a couple options, but can't split the defenders. And Baluku has it taken off his feet by Harris, doing a great job. We talked about earlier the importance of the wide mids to get back and help defend. And Harris gave a clinic in that just now. Tuck in, Jake. With Cutler. But you're right on that with the wide midfielders. In fact, defensively, you could almost say Colgate's almost playing with five in the back, three center backs, and those wide midfielders dropping as, as wide backs for them. O'Neal with a good turn there. 14. Stroud. It's a ball in. Chris Finney heads that one down and into, into danger, but Cherry hits that one up. Yeah, not a good clearance by Finney, and he's to get that up in the air and away. Well, he had time, I think, to go ahead and hit that one, bring it down and hit it away. He decided to he try to head it instead. A little 1-2 now. Dinks ball in behind, looking for Embaluka and Tom, and just going to put that one out for a throw in. Tom, one of those players that really does, as a center back, he's really everywhere. He is. He covers a lot. He's, a, he's really, if they're playing with three centers back, he is the center of them. He's very good in the air as well. He's got two goals off restarts in the air. Another local guy from uh, uh, Washington, D.C. went to the Murray School. Like he's going to have to go back and he's got his hands up to his teammates saying, where were you not giving me any options to pass? Yeah, look long, looking for Fasano, but it's headed away by Umaligian. Yeah, that's one of the things that can happen with with, with uh, Panos Naki uh, essentially playing up top as he dropped back for the ball and opened up that space for Fasano to run into. It makes it difficult for the defenders, the central defenders on Colgate, to make that decision whether to go with Panos or leave him. Switch looking for Pagani, Tim. Neumann 
place it back to the Lancer. It's a perfect day today in Washington, D.C. It's hard to believe that we're uh, almost mid-November, almost at Thanksgiving time with the weather today. Ludwig shot from, or excuse me, across. It looked like it was going to shoot there, and Irola gets a service in. Holdsworth will fake to the outside, serves it in, and cleared away by Zach Brown. Eagles have had the majority of possession early on. There's got some big bodies in the middle of that uh, 18 when they get the services in, so there's got to be some really clever running uh, to get in, and the balls have to get in those seams between the big guys. Holdsworth tries to just power his way through, but he can't quite do so. Good little ball there by Fasano finds Irola, but Luigi takes it off his feet. That was a good effort by Irola, but the touch just stays too close to him. He gets that touch a little bit further out. He, he's beat he's beat his defender on the turn. Back here with the ball, his feet shot from distance, left footed strike, and Ricky Brown with the save. You know, it was an interesting decision by Coach West at halftime against Bucknell to take uh, Panos Naki out of the midfield and put him up top. And you know, really, that what that does, it, it doesn't give you a traditional target forward there, but it gives you a guy that just moves all over the place, a total free range of going where he needs to be. And you watch that second half in the overtime, he was everywhere left side, right side, center, up top, in the back, and changed the game around for America. That's typically where you don't want to play it right across the face of goal, but Cherry does find his goalkeeper. Things have settled down a lot since the first minute or so of play, where at first five really, where Colgate was really pressing forward. And it's kind of settled down now. Both teams have gotten into that feeling each other out phase. Yeah, I mean, since, uh, since they dodged a couple bullets at the beginning, it has been uh, American University in control for the most part. Slip by Michael Cherry could give some space. Finds Harris, but his first touch lets him down. Now for an eagle throw. Applause from the good crowd on hand here for this final. First time since 2012 that the Patriot League tournament has been held here at American. And as we said, 2011, it was these same two teams in the final. It was. It took two amazing goals by uh, Cole Gates, Mike Garza, and Mike Reedy to win that game. And when the fifth time for them, 5-0 and oh in these championship games for Colgate. Winner goes to the NSA tournament. Tournament selection show tomorrow afternoon. Nothing's free! Both these teams, the two highest uh, rated teams in the RPI, but, but probably neither one high enough to, uh, on the outside of the bubble looking in. They're going to need the win to get to the NSA tournament. In the middle. And then he goes down following a little bit of contact there as he ran through that header. Our ref's just going to help him up. I think he's going to be just fine. Looks a little shaken up, but it doesn't look to need to come off or anything. Good look at that crowd in the background. And again, a beautiful day here in Washington, D.C. Well, if anyone questions that things, it's the weather's not normal. 60 degrees in the close to the middle of November will definitely tell you all you need to know. Well, I guess one of us has to say it, global warming, right? Yeah. But whatever it is, I like it. 
it, it's one of the things like it, this time of year I'm not completely complaining if it is too cold because it's I'm, I'm used to it being cold by this time of year but this this is kind of like weather from home for me down in South Carolina <laughs> there you go as we see this game kind of settling a little bit, you know, you sometimes wonder in these games where you're playing, uh, you know, on a Sunday after a Friday, and oftentimes you have, you know, moments of high energy, you know, and then and then players having to, to step back and, and I say not relax in terms of their effort, but sometimes the, the pace of the game, not what they want. And for Colgate, as we see this ball back to the Landra for Colgate, it's their third game in six in six days as well, so quite a challenge for them. Good ball by Neumann. And misplayed by Cherry there to fall out of bounds for a throw in for Colgate. And clearly they have a long throw with Stroud on the ball as you got the big guys from the back coming up. Well, they're definitely gonna be looking for one of the three or one of the two center backs. Tom and the only center back still in his normal location. That's where AU defenders have to track their second runners as well for the flicks. Stroud second service right across the face. Dangerous ball in. Excellent service, really composed by Stroud and impressed with him in this early going. Jared Stroud, the junior from New Jersey, and guy with a great work ethic. He can he's had his eight assist, eight assists on the year and four goals. He does everything for them. Well, he had an incredible goal on Friday. It was one of those where no one really knew whether it was a cross or a shot, but the only thing that they knew was Matt Sanchez from Loyola was picking it up out of the back of his net. That's exactly right. I mean, it, it, it's certainly a shot if you ask Stroud, and everyone else would probably be 50-50 on it, but it, it iced that game, and you know, that was a, an exciting game. It was end-to-end, -end and both teams having a lot of momentum in it with Loyola and, and Colgate, and uh, Colgate absorbed a lot of pressure and actually re responded really well after giving up the penalty kick in the last seconds of the first half. And, you know, that would have broke some teams, and I think that's one of the strengths of them is, you know, being able to deal with adversity and coming back in games. Counterattack could be on now. Stroud looking for Cutler. He goes to Pagani instead and cleared away. Yeah, Cutler was not happy not receiving that ball. He felt he was open in good position, and he was. So excellent tackle. Big tackle by Tim Oberg. And Pagani now. Fene does well to just get goal side and shield that one out. A substitution for the Eagles. As Mbaluku going to come off for Garrett Muzikowski, sending Nakid out to the wing. Garrett Muzikowski started the uh, game on Friday against Bucknell. He actually got uh, got hit fairly hard at Charlie Horse, uh, where he, you know he was not as effective as he wanted to be. He came back in late in the game as well. But he's a guy that gives a good spark off the bench for American University. Three goals on the year, one assist for the junior from New Jersey. He's had a couple more that were called offside as well. Very close, some very close calls. As Muzikowski now looks in behind for Irola. Joe Irola, flag up for offside. Oh, that was close. What a great look uh, by Muzikowski. And Joe Irola doesn't need to be uh, have much of a lead there to get behind the defense. So he's looking right across the field. And that was probably a bang-bang call. But man, you would like Joe to just, just hold a little bit because that defender had to turn his back on the ball, face his own goal. But Immediately, uh, Muzikowski makes a difference. A good turn, left foot through, splitting those defenders. They were isolated with those three in the back, and that's where they did not have any wide players back to help. Well, and it's such a different look, the difference between Muzikowski and Nakid. You've got Nakid who's going to dribble three, and <laughs> Muzikowski who's going to run right through. Not an advantage. I think I have to agree with Todd West on that one. Yeah, not feeling there was an advantage to that. At the same time, they have the ball in the attack in the front half of the field. Big switch by Nakid finds Irola. Good first touch. Neumann in front of him cuts it outside. 
Early service, Muzikowski with space in front. Tim Neumann, shot blocked well. Eagles really putting the pressure forward. Ludwig strike from distance easy for Ricky Brown. He's Ricky Brown, but again, really good movement. Uh, Iroola going at him, laying the ball, and this was Neumann following up on that. A lot of backs, left backs would have held up, following up. It went to not his favorite foot, his right foot, but uh, got blocked on the shot. Good pressure by American University. And I got to see that one out for a throw in. Two shots on target for Americans. Still no shots on target necessarily for Colgate, but certainly maybe the best chance of the game right in the first minute. Tom and pastored by Muzikowski. And forced right out of play. Just ran out of real estate. Quick throw in for the Eagles. Good decision by Garcia to just get that out. Uh, there's a possibility of trying to play that square to Neumann, but no need to take that risk. Tim Neumann now. Ball into Irola's feet. Joe Irola tries to cut inside Uligi and can't quite do so. Movement! Get wet! Wet! Move! Nakid, Panos Nakid ball still at his feet and touched just away. Just got a little touch. Yeah, a little bit a little bit longer of the touch, maybe doing a little bit more and than, than he needs to right there. But you know, you just gotta you know keep their composure with their intensity, of course, and uh, you know, not panic. There's no need to get into any panic or anything or any frustration. They've pretty much had the best of the game except for those two or three moments uh, early. Just about half an hour gone. Still level at nil-nil. Ball into Muzikowski's feet. Not a great first touch, but he'll maintain possession, use his size and strength to just keep that one in. 14, Jake. Triple change for the Raiders as it's going to be Kentara Morrison to come on along with Umaragbe. And up top, they're going to put Abdel Sonogo. That's with uh, 15 minutes and change left in the first half. And again, with the amount of games that they've played uh, this week, you, you might see uh, you know, a little less unusual to see three subs at, at the same time. I think if Colgate had been in a good rhythm, maybe that wouldn't have happened, but the rhythm has been for AU so far. Now, Keed battles through that challenge. Tug on him by a couple players. Space in front. Joe Irola, right footed strike, blocked well by Uligian, who's coming across. And that one very well could have been to the far post. Yeah, I actually think uh, uh, Panos Naki did everything right there except for the pace of his pass to Irola. It was just, just a bit off, a bit too slow, and allowed the defender to recover. Space in front of Chris Fane now. Muzikowski. Move, Max! Panos, get up with support! Cleared away. Garcia just puts a little something on that. Eagles have looked scattered at the back at times, but they've seemed to fight their way through it. Yeah, they have, and that can happen sometimes when you actually have the ball a lot, and the Eagles have had the ball a lot, and that way, that's so important that the guys in the back stay focused and stay organized. It could even be a lucky clearance, and if you're not ready, it gets in behind you. Nakid on the right wing now. Panos Nakid puts it to his left foot. And again, Uligian gets a little something on it, but Dale Ludwig picks that one up. Make sure here, Chris. 
Tyrol uh, looked to dink it over the keeper. You know, not a bad idea. I mean, he showed a great deal of skill. I thought he was going to hit it uh, first time. It was coming onto his left foot. He's, he's fairly equal with both of them. He can strike it well with the left and decided the other way. But all right, good, good pressure. Vinny Barone coming in for him. So you got to tell Joe if you want to stay in the game, you got to put that in the back of the net. Now he's out. Vinny came in at the end. Uh, came in in the middle of the second half against our Bucknell. He didn't play a long time, but he made a big difference because he brought, gave the width to American that they weren't using. Well, he almost did make the difference with that powerful header from about three yards out. But a huge save by Ryan Ott kept the rate or kept the Bison level until the last two and a half minutes of play. As it stands, three shots for American, zero for the Bison, or excuse me, for the Raiders. That was zero for the Bison for most of that game as well, by the way. Especially it was, it was most of the second half. Used to saying that in the second half of that game. And Coach Brandon Nash did a great job getting his guys as ready as they could be for that. Thank you. Oberg trying for the acrobatic tackle and a little bit of a suplex on <laughs> Garrett Muzikowski called for the foul. Yeah. Brought a bit of yelling from the Eagles bench, but really just just uh, just an attempt to win the ball. Nothing big. Let's see if they get a ball uh, into the far side and get some guys going into the box off of this ball. There's a Kowski just trying to use his size, poked away. Yeah, what he's got to do though is even if he doesn't think he can win the ball, he's got to jump. He can't make it easy for the defender to have a, a clean go at it. Counter-attacking opportunity now. Cutler looking over his shoulder to see as it comes down to the right side. Good challenge by Fene. Quit dribbling was the yell from the bench, and that was a, absolutely correct. He needed to just get a hold of the ball, get his head up, and play it. So often you hear pass out of tackles. Block stopped, and just a settle down by Michael McBride to Panos Nakid. So see, I like that because, you know, again, in the game the other day, we saw the, the official give a yellow card for something similar to that right about the same time of the game. And uh, I, I thought that just put a lot of pressure on the official to, you know, give out cards for a lot of things that maybe you wouldn't. Well, and uh, as I said earlier, you saw a little uh, high five between Nakid and Oberg. They, they <laughs> right. were teammates over the summer. They played together for the entire summer, including a game against Southampton. And a free kick in a dangerous area. Come on, Ruff! He doesn't need to get involved in stuff like that. Help out in there. Send Kim out here if you want. Sam, right there. Good. Just keep an eye. Stroud with the free kick. Well, I tell you, Tim Neumann got away with that. He uh, was not intending to head that back to Belanger, but uh, it worked out for him. Baron looking to use his pace on the counter attack. Hey, that is a foul. That's a foul. That is a foul. In fact, not only a foul, I mean, that's as intentional a foul as you get, too. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw more than that, but. Can we call him out? The sun's in my eyes. So, yeah, I, I tell you what, I would have, a yellow card in that would have been warranted. Yeah, I think just because it's the goalkeeper doesn't give doesn't give him the right to do that out there. Well, I think if anything, it gives him less of a right to do that. If yeah. you see a, if you see a field player coming body to body, that's something you see pretty regularly. If you see a keeper coming across the body like that, that's a much different scenario. Well, I think keeper Ricky Round realized he had made a made a mistake. I think coming out there, that ball was probably heading out. Service in. Top of the box for Fasano. Shot from distance. Left-footed strike and an easy save for Ricky Brown. 
A warm-up ball for Ricky Brown. Basically, yeah. Uh, it was not going to be an easy one to get a good strike on. Fene gets tangled up. That's Abdel Sonogo, the substitute that just came in for Colgate, a sophomore from Texas, one goal on the year. And again, this is uh, the danger part uh, that American University has to be very careful of, a quick free kick. O'Neal out to Cutler. Cutler looks to go touchline. Dangerous ball. And I think the appeals for a penalty there were very warranted as Dale Ludwig gives a two-handed shove to the player in the box, Carl Brown. Yeah, it's quite likely that wasn't seen as the ball was going across and, and Ludwig, uh, those two are still going at it quite a bit and there was a retaliation, you know, as well going on. I mean, they have to be careful and, 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 and unfortunately it's Dale Ludwig's got to be more careful because he's the defender in the box. On. I think you're right when you say that it was just uh, that he was unsighted there because it was there's no question that that was a two-handed push. The only question is what happened before that, <laughs> if, there, if there was a first push before or not. So we got just under eight minutes left in the first half. Colgate has looked dangerous when they've had these restarts, and right now, regardless of whether a uh, good call or not good call, and I thought it was a good call, I thought the Dale went over top, they have to do the defending now. And again, so important here to, to track the second runners. Wouldn't be surprised to see Cutler pull one, two here, and he's gonna instead serve it to the back post to Uligian, heads it on. And Vinny Barone. Yeah, I agree with you. With Cutler on the ball, I almost figured that they were going to try to get it to him, you know, out here, let him go down. And well, so it was interesting when your, your top goal scorer's taking the restart 10 yards in front of midfield. Well, and also you had Ober kind of tuck in. I thought it was yep. just going to be a little one two there to draw in Nakid and give him tons of space down the right wing. Neumann does very well defensively. Fasano across Harris there to win the ball. Eagles can't seem to connect more than a couple passes in this past couple minutes. The momentum is shifting as we get now into the last few minutes of the first half. No, it, it definitely is a little bit, uh, you know, American had had some really good moments, uh, you know, probably 20 minutes where it was all American for quite a bit, had a number of chances. They gotta keep a hold of things right now, not give up anything late. Ball on behind, a huge slide challenge by Michael Cherry, taking it off the feet of Sonogo. Uh, you, you know, when you're an American University person, your heart kind of stops as Cherry's going in for that because it has to be perfect timing, and that is one of his top qualities at one-on-one -on -one defending. Joel, if he's injured, you go for him. That Musikowski down. Joel Hart getting ready to go in for somebody. Musikowski, I think, saying he received a little bit of a shove while in the air. That's why he came down bad on that ankle. A reminder, this is the Patriot League Men's Soccer Final on the Patriot League Network on Campus Insiders. We'll just, we'll just go for him since he has to go. NCA bid on the line, and Luzikowski will come off. Joel Hart in for him. Originally, it was supposed to be Hart for Nakid, but they are going to have to make a change for the injured Muzikowski. And it makes sense. And Joel Hart, the junior from Pittsburgh, four goals and one assist on the year. Another guy that can uh, battle these big guys from Colgate in the back in the air for the balls. I think this ball will go back to to Colgate. Holdsworth going to send this one all the way back to the keeper. Could a shot on goal for that? <laughs> Oh, Rick, Ricky Brown did have to make a save. Yeah, it would have been, save, probably yeah. been going in behind in if it weren't for that. There but go. Fene lets that one ride out. Oh, that was a free kick. Oh, 
But you're right, Nick. You mentioned uh, a couple minutes ago that you kind of lost that momentum that they had, and you know, just over five minutes left in the half, and you certainly don't want to end the first half the way it started with Colgate with a couple great chances. The Eagles will look to get up quick and start a counterattack now. Three Colgate Raiders on Joel Hart as quick as he gets the ball. And Carl Brown just happy to use his left foot to clear that one away. Ludwig. Dakid. Moragbe putting the pressure on Nakid. Enough right footed shot curling and well over the bar. Yeah, don't mind them having to go from there, but once he had that touch, it got too far away from him. I think he needed to have a different decision. With how much space I'm from, he could have seen that there wasn't going to be a shot on goal. Just faked that one and cut it back. Keep going, absolutely. This is one of the things that you know they do have a lot of their defenders have blocked uh, several of the shots and you know sometimes you just need to do do that go at them pull them out play a one two to open up some more space so now going hot pursuit chris finney has to just hit that one away and harris comes through around there Neumann frustrated. He thought that they could have yep. gotten an attack going. No, exactly. They just get it out to him and go. And I, actually, you know, American had the ball there too. You know, uh, when, the, when the foul was called, it wouldn't have been out of the question to just keep playing on. This sun is playing, uh, definitely playing a factor right now. It's going right into the eyes of the Langer on this side. Certainly, American wants to get through this half and take advantage of that in the second half. Not much time remaining here. Just under three minutes now. Dale Ludwig ball at his feet. Leaves that one for Neumann. First time to Nakid. Pass Nakid into the side netting. So unlucky. It's difficult. You know, Nakid has, has the ability to get that ball going away from the goal with his back to everything. But I think Neumann probably uh, should have used him as a, as a decoy, the run going out, opening up some space for Neumann to go in. Well, and also, just by the same token, Neumann could have gone in, but somebody should have filled that space for him and given him a little run there as in the well. Middle. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's really got to be Holdsworth or Ludwig, I think. One of those two midfielders. I mean, you've got uh, Hart and... The other winger out well wide. Well, I'm sure that every player on the AU field feels that it, it's never a bad decision to play the ball to Naki. Has Naki, the son of one of the all time greats at American University, David Naki, the Trinidadian international. Was the captain for the Trinidadian national team for several years running. Harris forced to go back. Morrison's service in and called off by Belanger. Nakid with space in front, a little fake. And he's going to make Umaragbe dive in. Move the ball! Pass the ball! Little one-two there. Service in. It's kind of like we saw yesterday on the first goal, just that little cross field ball. It was just no running in the box at that one. And here's the danger Cutler in the open space. Ethan Cutler shot. He's going to send that one over towards the tennis courts. And so Ethan Cutler's nine goals on the year for them in the Patriot League uh, tournament. That was a record. That ties the Patriot League record. He also set the record for goals in a game with his hat trick in the first round. And he opened up the scoring against Loyola the other day and just kind of got in the middle of a, of a whole crowd of people and a real composed, puts it in with his left foot into the corner. 
And Colgate came out great against Loyola. The first 15 minutes, 20 minutes, Colgate was all over Loyola. And uh, rewarded themselves with the one goal, but probably deserved to have two or three at that time. Go! Go! Holdsworth runs himself into some traffic. And that is it for action in the first half. Still scoreless here at Reeves Field. A hard fought game back and forth. We'll take a quick break. Be back after this on the Patriot League Network. Back here on the Patriot League Network at halftime. It is level as we get ready for the second half of play. And we'll take a quick look at the first half stats from that from the matchup. Nine shots for the Eagles, two for the Raiders. But the biggest difference has been is the fact that the Eagles can't really get any set pieces, and that's something where we've seen them dangerous. No corners, two for Colgate. I think you look at that because uh, you had, uh, what, about 14 corners the other day against Bucknell. But it's also it's three shots on, on goal for, for AU. They have credited uh, Colgate with a couple shots on goal uh, there, but I'm not sure. I think those were just over. I mean, Colgate came out fast, and then they almost had those two chances right at the beginning. The game has been AU's. They've had, you know, let's say, you know, 70% control of this game. they got to get more runs in the box that are more dangerous. I think there's a lot of static uh, in the box. You know, the players getting in there but not moving, not getting in front of the big players by Colgate, but it's got to be the same. Get it out wide, try to bring the defenders out and get that ball in. And the, it, it, as we said, nine shots, but only three of those on target. But I think if you counted the blocked shots as shots on target, it'd be many more, but the stats don't do that. We'll take a look now. Doug Dugan, the armbands worn by the Eagles, and you played with Doug back in your playing days here. Uh, what does this mean for the Eagles to be wearing this armband? Well, I think it's been a great motivation, you know, uh, for, for the Eagles. Uh, Doug passed away this last summer. He battled lupus his entire adult life, and Doug was one of the best players to ever wear uh, an Eagles uniform, and we're just so proud that they, they did this and that they're honoring Doug with that. They're also honoring with the, uh, the American University Doug Dugan Excellence Award as well, and you know, we hope, uh, we know Doug is looking down, smiling on American University and hoping they can uh, pull one of the goals out, one that he did many of in his days on this field. Well, he was the, uh, he along with you were part of the first time the Eagles went to the NCAA tournament and now they will look to repeat that with a win today. Colgate looking to get back for the first time since 2011. Yes, in 2011 when they beat American here on this field 2-0 in the Patriot League final and the Eagles trying to turn that one around and it's been a while, 2004 for American, they've been in the hunt every time and you know I think if they keep playing the way they're playing, you know, it just takes it takes one, one good ball into the box, one good run, they certainly have the better of it and I do think these are the two best teams in the Patriot League at this time. Well, the Eagles will be hoping that after this game they'll be able to say no more next year, just like the Cubs <laughs> were able to do so a few weeks back. Cleared away. Sonoga did stay in, and a foul called as Jake Garcia. A little bit too physical with Sonogo. Yeah, and we're back to the same starting lineup for American University as well. Panos Nakied up at the top position at the center, center forward. Taken quick, and it will be an eagle throw taken quickly to Dale Ludwig. Come on, Joe! I think it's important for, for America to try to try to up the tempo without forcing the play. Uh, I think the fact that Colgate is in their third game in six days, you know, and, and their game against uh, against Loyola, while it was three to one, that was a very difficult game. It was a ton of energy spent in that game. And you know, I, I think if they can keep the pressure on, keep the ball moving, you know, that could that could be the difference in the last 10 minutes of the game. The legs on the field. Look with space in front of them. Look who gets around that one. Nakid and Tommen gets a little something on it. Ober clears just as far as Chris Finney for American. Fasano sends it wide to Irola. Little shoulder fake, right-footed shot into Bulegian. 
And again, it was a good move coming inside Firolo. You know, he, he, he maybe needs to look at the guy coming around him on the overlap. And tr still, they still got to pull these defenders out of the middle. Uh, again, I don't mind the shots from there, but that had a lot of people to go through. Allen has to go all the way back to Belanger. Sometimes you do have to play it all the way back when you're facing there, because if you turn, you've got a guy right on your shoulder. Good awareness by Michael Cherry to realize that. Neumann slips it in, not keyed now. Uh, Snakeed sends it wide to Irola. Space in front. Joe Irola's cross stays in play. And, it, and he's pulled down, but no call. And I think given the fact that the Eagles got away with one earlier when Dale Ludwig pushed somebody down at one for one. Well, yeah, so certainly if the officials talked about that at halftime and felt it was missed, you know, who, who knows, maybe. I hope that they don't do that if he saw something there, but it certainly looked like there was an argument for, for a foul. For credit to AU, they kept playing as well and almost had that ball right in. Chris Finney. Finds Ludwig, Ludwig driving into space. Dale Ludwig looks to turn the corner and it's taken off his feet by Tommen with a big slide challenge. I know the start of this second half has to be worrying to Raiders head coach Eric Ronning as uh, AU had come out right at them and he's giving up the ball off a throw in though. Terrible giveaway by Chris Finney. Eric Ronnie is 12th season with Colgate. He was a player for them, captain of their team, and he's done just a fantastic job there to see his career going uh, so well for him. Tons of space opposite side for Scudari, but Stroud taking it out right as we see Finney all the way. Finney taking down a free kick for the Eagles. But I think they got to keep looking for the ball here, though, too. I know, you know, Belanger will probably get this up high, and that means, you know, that means what you're looking for is to win the second ball. But again, they, if they could just keep that ball moving around and force Colgate to, to chase while they're trying to get in behind them, I think it's going to pay off as it goes on. Send that one out wide to Scudari. Cherry heads away. Fene with a little flick. Scudari. And a good tackle, but a terrible pass by Michael Cherry. Yeah, good back pass by Ludwig, though. <laughs> right into Fene. But Terry, you know, I don't know where Terry was going with that, but they have enough players there to just keep the ball moving. They got to be a little patient. That one almost makes its way through to Nakid. Settle in and play. Two touch. Chris Finney stumbles over the ball. And in warm-ups, he looked a tiny bit shaky. Looked good in the first half, but he's looked shaky again here in the second in the start of the second half. Panos Nakid lays this one back for Fasano. Eagles doing a much better job today of switching the point of attack, trying to switch the field, moving it around than they did against Bucknell. I think it took them a while against Bucknell before the weak side players stayed wide. You had some times where you had the entire team on, on one side of the field. Irola trying to find enough space to turn around and the big cross out for a goal kick. But that's an example right there. Is, is there, there's a time, or just as we're giving them a compliment on that, it's a time where they had everybody on that half of the field and you know they, they just need to be able to pull out and have a weak side guy be patient. And Baluka was that guy and he's standing there really just two yards from, from Naki. So you could have you know one defender effectively taking care of both of them, but there's three or four defenders in there. They've got to get out wide and, and be patient. Well, AU has had some luck on those big switches. They, we saw it against Lehigh in the final game of the regular season when Ludwig with an incredible one. It's going to be Scudari well, get the throw on right in front of us. Yeah, when you got Colgate with the, I mean, again, they effectively have five in the back defensively, you know, and, and if you keep bringing them all inside without anyone hanging out wide on the weak side, you're just helping them. Well, 
it's when whenever you do have a 3-5-2, it translates very well to a 5-3-2. I think right now it's so important for American to get a hold of the ball and just start connecting some passes, uh, you know, get them back into a bit of rhythm. You know, for Colgate, they're absorbing some things here. And again, this is where they've been the most dangerous, getting balls up, trying to play off of it. And that ball going to Cutler, really no one around to help him though. Cool. Both, both Finney and Cutler getting a little bit of a settle down warning, I think rightfully so. Finney for the reaction, Cutler for the second challenge on Chris Finney. I think that's why Finney was a little frustrated. Yeah, he's a little frustrated. To be honest, it's, you know, it's not much. It's both of them trying to get position in there and, you know, nothing over the top, nothing dirty. And, you know, you, you will hope that you see that, that they're both trying to get, get their position to win the ball. But again, the key for AU in the defending there is the second, second ball and for Colgate to get a few more numbers up there. Ball in too far behind, stays alive. Ludwig turns tons of space in front of him, looking for Iroola. He'll find him. Neumann with the overlap. And a big tackle by Umaragbe. So Colgate has done an excellent job in that in that final third, making it difficult to have the wide players for American to be able to beat you cleanly and get around. They've been able to come to the inside, but coming to the inside is also where they have all their players. And another poor pass and a good ball in. And a big save by Lucas Belanger. Stroud was one on one, but Belanger did well. Well, I'll tell you, Finney needs to, needs to get composed because uh, you know you, you give the ball away and then you're not in a good position defending. Belanger saves him there, and you, you just got to take a deep breath and face up and just be a good defender. No need for any foul there. Well, he was off balance, and that's not what you want to see from a veteran right back is an off balance defender. Where's the line? What's our line? Again, the best chance of this half just now by Stroud. Great save by Belanger. Fasano gets a little something on that. Cutler, Garcia stays down. Cooper, Cooper, Cooper. The clock, clock is stopped. So I'll tell you, I think, you know, as we look at the, you know, the first 10 minutes of this half as an American came out and it was looking quite good and getting the ball into the, into the uh, defense, defensive part of Colgate's uh, back line, but still not getting anything too dangerous. Again, the, the runs in there need to be better, but now all of a sudden a couple of mistakes and you, you, they have to be sure that they don't get frustrated, that they uh, stay composed. And it's been a couple times now out of the back that there's been some balls that have created a lot of problems for them. Colgate getting on the end of them and going on counterattacks. Well, it's one of those things that if you switch off for 20 seconds, it can cost you the game. And the Eagles have to do exact, like prevent doing that and not switch off, and especially as they defend here on the long throw. Let's get warm anyway. You know, clearly when you're in games like this, which are very likely to be a, a one-goal game, it is moments, you know, a little moment here or there that makes the difference to taking advantage of a mistake or making a huge play. Garcia is still down, but the trainer was not summoned onto the field. Hanos, get everyone tuned in now! Garcia is up limping a little bit and he's got to shake that one off and mark his man here on the long throw by Stroud. Long throw in, headed away by Cherry. Now they got to stay with their marks. Stroud defended by Irola. 
Dangerous ball in. And a penalty call. They called hands on the back there, pushing him down, and uh, AU is not happy about that in the box, and uh, they're trying to keep everybody controlled in there. But this was the defending out wide that allowed that ball to be crossed in. It was one versus two, and they allowed the cross to get in to begin with, and you, know, you do good defending out there, and, and, and you keep Stroud out. Well, this is exactly what you don't want to see if you're the Eagles. Lucas Belanger going to fix his gloves and give it a second and a word to the captains by the referee saying exactly what he saw. And we just talked about moments in the game and uh, you know there certainly were two hands on the back whether it was a push that really caused the guy to go down the way that he did or not. Uh, wouldn't be able to tell you that but it's Cutler on the ball. Four goals in the Patriot League tournament already. Belanger with the big play of the game so far with that one-on-one -on -one save, trying to make another one to keep the score level. Well, we saw one that should have been a penalty earlier for Colgate, and now they will get that chance. They had two against Army West Point, and Cutler steps up for it. Belanger trying to look as big as possible. Slow run up by Ethan Cutler, and Belanger gets down to the right side, but it's underneath him, and Colgate is on top 1-0. And it is Ethan Cutler taking advantage of the penalty kick and the go-to guy. Fifth goal in the Patriot League tournament, his 10th goal of the year. And now, obviously, uh, uh, another challenge for America. Same challenge they were in the other day where they are down by a goal and they're going to have to chase this game. And of course, if you chase this game against a team like Colgate who has a guy up top like Cutler, you got to be very careful as you do it. Well, this is where the Eagles were only two days ago, down 1-0. And they were down that game for basically the entire second half. They will hope that it doesn't go that long this time before they can equalize. No, exactly. And by the way, all that came from poor clearances, from poor decisions coming out of the back, and you know balls that were going right back into Colgate. We had just mentioned that, and that whole series that Colgate had there came from that. Fasano to no one. And Oberg plays that one a little too far from Cutler. Vene, you need to play soccer right now. Thanks for letting me know the rule. Play soccer. Let's go. Really important five five minutes or so here for American to, to try to get their composure back and get a hold of the game. They were they were in control coming out of the of the half and they were in control for the vast majority of the first half as well. Sene heads that one to no one but Sonogo. And a pair of substitutions as Marag Bay comes off and Pagani and Harris onto the field. Both started the match and now come in with their team on top. Also leading the match, number nine, number seven, Uli Omarag Bay. Oliver Cutler with really nowhere to go. Finds a little bit of space though, and he's gonna try to probably win a corner here, and it's out for a throw. Gives Stroud the opportunity for the long throw now. Four back for the Raiders, what Coach Todd West saying to the Eagles. And you have to wonder, are they gonna pack it in like Bucknell did and just sit back and park the bus? Well, they're gonna do it a little bit. I, I, you've got 32 minutes left, plenty of time, and AU has the skill to open them up. Stroud lone driven, Belanger down to it, but it's not cleared. You know, it's the second time for Stroud there beating players and getting that left-footed play. And again, all you need to do is be a good defender and not allow that service. And you would think that after the first time he turned, it was almost identical, his move. And you just got to be better defenders on that to push him back. Is Stroud really impressive today. He's been all over the field and really been the man of the match so far for Colgate. 
Neumann and Baluku in front of him. Ball in looking for Mbaluku. They were not on the same page. I think one of the challenges for American as well, Danny Kaiser's out with an injury, Luke Browning also injured, and that's some of the depth that you may need at this, you know, to give some sparks in the in the second half. You got Muzikowski on the bench and Hart on the bench that can come on, Vinny Barone. All attacking players, all players who can score goals, and we saw that in the uh, in the game on Friday. Every attacking player they had was on the field towards the end. Good job by Fanay to just get a little something on that. Now it's Tim Neumann. Long for Irola. Joe Irola still with the ball. Two defenders on him, and he's got to go back to Fene. Numbers in the box. Simple, simple. Eagles going to reset. They're resetting there, but they're in such a good position, uh, you know, before they came back. And well, it's good composure coming around the back. I think they really needed to force that issue once they're in the attacking third without forcing the play. Not sure who that was to, but Ricky Brown off his line to come get it. Yeah, I think Neumann mishit that one. Trying to cut back. Garcia going up big for that header. He was the one who got the Eagles to this point. He is the one who put the Eagles behind today. So what, whatever American has to do, they have to do it at speed and with pace and intensity right now. They can't take too much time knocking it around the back. They gotta get it into the attacking part. Well, it's been mostly Raiders here in the second half. The Eagles still have not had a shot in this half, but four for Loyola. Joe Irola, curling shot wide. That's the type of ball that Irola uh, is very good at putting on target. And you know, the other thing you talk about the you know shot on goal this half, we hadn't had, uh, American hasn't had a corner kick in the game yet either. And and that's a, a sign of you know when when you're able to put constant pressure and maintain the pressure in the, in the attacking third, you know, that you tend to get those things good runs in the box for the crosses. And what we saw in the first half where there were a lot of wide play and crosses getting in there, just haven't seen as much, even though you know they've had the ball quite quite a bit of the time. Ball in behind Tom and Phil clearance, Panos Nakit, space in front, gets it across, Uligian across for it. But just one, uh, one eagle in the box there, and as soon as Panos won that ball, they need to have players to crash in for that. Missed touch, Skadari, or excuse me, uh, that was Stroud appealing for a foul. Referee tells him, get up. Well handled by Mbaluku off a poor pass by Fene. Nakid, numbers in the box. He's gonna send this one out to Mbaluku again, one on one with Harris. The defenders able to turn low and driven service. Ludwig can't quite make the turn. He shielded his guy, but he couldn't make the turn he needed to with the ball at his feet and it's cleared away. He also needed some support there, so he had an option to lay that ball off, which wasn't there, and they just need to get players in. Once this ball's going by players in the American attack, they need to turn and face up, and Harris had done a great job defending on Mbaluku for a while, and then allowed him to turn to the right, and you can tell that they're trying to bring the players into the middle where they have all the defenders. Neumann gets a little touch. Pagani looks to go kick and run past Garcia. You have to play it safe there, and 20, just under 27 minutes, still plenty of time, but clock still not on the side of American. Colgate is certainly going to be very deliberate in how they play right now. Thrown up to Cutler, and an eagle throw, and that one goes off Ethan Cutler, who's putting his hands up to the AR. 
I see a big difference with this and Friday. Uh, Friday with Bucknell up by a goal. All 11 players were back at midfield and behind the ball. And Colgate not much different than how they approached in the first half, but, but understand they always had five players in the back line and another three right in front of them to begin with. Well, the big thing is, is you saw, or the Raiders saw in the game footage that one goal wasn't enough to see that one out. You can't just sit back against these Eagles because if you do, they might find a, t a way to break you down. They are they're a good team. They're just going to continue to press. Ludwig. Square ball to Finney. Irola has to go to Fene. And Baluka made a good run, but it wasn't going to sneak through. And you can see the problem is you got you know, there are too many passes right in that same area, you know, three or four passes inside five yards, and you gotta find a way to get it and switch it to the other side. How many is Cutler going to get? That's his third, two against Finney, one against Garcia. That probably the hardest of the three. And the Eagles play it quick. Mark Fasano plays it into Holdsworth's feet. Iraola, and it's put out, and it will be the Eagles' first corner of the match. We, as we were saying, they haven't gotten any so far. They'll hope to get something set up here. Left-footed in swinger for Irola. Driven to the back post over everyone. Pagani able to get it clear. And, and, and that's the frustrating thing. You get a corner kick and, and you don't give yourselves a chance on it. And it happened several times Friday. And I think when you got all the big guys there for, for, for Colgate, it's that near post area that has really got to be the target for that cross. Fanei taking his sweet time of the ball. Panos Naki cuts it back. Oberg rolls underneath, but able to get back in front. Good ball by Nakid. If Holdsworth can get there, could be trouble. And a goal kick. And very hard to tell whether that who that went out on first, but it's a goal kick as well. It's a good ball through and uh, you know almost on, but this is the thing, it's still all in that same spot and same side, and they gotta find a way to release it and get it to the other side. Well Holdsworth got there to it, but he try and he got a little touch on it, but probably could have blasted into the shins to sell that That's corner if it was. Exactly what he needed to do, absolutely. He wasn't gonna get the ball in, so you might as well just hit it hard and hope it goes, takes a deflection. Back heel, and one for the Eagles now. Good idea by Holdsworth, but he can't quite get that ball in. And ball off of Ludwig's foot. Twenty-two and a half minutes left in this game. Again, the clock has to seem to be going real fast for AU and real slow for Colgate. Same ball as before. And a free kick for the Eagles. Free kick, a very good spot for the Eagles here. And I was wondering if they can curl this in. We really haven't seen anything uh, you know, from Colgate keeper in a long, long time. And maybe this is the ball to get right in behind between the six yard box and the penalty spot because there is a good space there. And that ball would eliminate the big guys on Colgate. Driven ball to the back post. Garcia heads it across the face of goal league and hits it away. 
That's what that big guy's in there to do is exactly that. And Baluku sets it for Nakid. Eagles still on the attack. Kibu and Baluku service across the face of goal. And an acrobatic clearance by Pagani. Well, unfortunately, again, for America, there's no one actually making runs in there. They had num numbers in the box, but no one making runs to get in front of the Colgate defenders. Best opportunity for the Eagles there with how few people they had in the box was just hit it off somebody for in for an own goal because there was no one there on their side. Ball moving at pace, left footed shot over the bar. Substitutions for the Eagles. It's going to be Matt Gillis coming in for American and a pair of substitutions for Colgate as Omaragbe comes back in along with Janssen. This is uh, Stroud coming out who's really been the guy making it all happen for Colgate. Been all over the field, served the ball in that led to the penalty kick. Had the shot right before that that Belanger saved. Neumann heads forward for Irola. Irola on the turn, looks to take it past O'Neill. Joe Irola left footed service right into O'Neill out for an AU throw. That's exactly what AU has to do when they have any, any bit of time there. They've got to go at them and really force the defenders to be good defenders. Good turn. Ludwig wins a corner. That one goes off the foot of Legion. This has got to be a better service from Irola than his last service. I mean, all you ask is that you give, you give your team a chance in there with the ball. You've got some guys that can go up and win headers. You've got Finney, you've got Ludwig, and it is cleared away. Tim Neumann, now Panos Nakid lets that one ride by him. He's going to look to turn the corner on Omaragbe. Splits two. Ludwig! And Finney and Ludwig both going for that one and just outside. Both going for it. The positive there is they were both going for it. It was one of the first times uh, since early when, when uh, Ludwig had that diving header where the guys in the box were on a full run to the ball. Tremendous individual effort by Naki to get through those two defenders and get the cross in. And you trying to turn, turn the tide here with the momentum. Eight minutes, 35 seconds left. Headed on by Cutler. Go for the ball! Flag up for offside. Played quickly by American. They're looking to get something going while Colgate's still up in attack. 2v1, here you go. Go, go. Nakid dances past Harris. And Oberg catches Nakid, and I think he's going to go into the referee's book as he's summoned over to the spot of the foul. And I think part of that is also because of uh, you know, Nakid getting fouled so many times in the last 10 minutes as well. And Nakid trying to make things happen there, and the ball almost got away from him, so the foul saved American there, get another free kick. They just got to be alert for the second ball, both teams. Holdsworth with plenty of space, and they're leaving this one wide open for Neumann now. No wall at all. Panos Nakid makes a little run in. Chipped in behind. Ludwig can't get up to it. Gillis still with the ball at his feet. Matt Gillis now, the freshman, serves it in. Brown heads it away. I roll over, or excuse me, Fasano over the bar. Yeah, I tell you, that was laying down perfectly for him, and you just don't need to hit that hard. You just need to have contact. Hit the top of the ball, and you've got a goal. He hit right underneath that and sent it out to the tennis courts. You got the momentum of the ball coming to you and the keeper having to move across. It won't take much, you know, to put that ball in the back of the net. Just got to hit the top of it. Eagles are going to need to get one soon. They don't want to take this one as deep as they had to take it on Friday. 
Morogbe back to Cutler. Cutler switches, looking for Harris. Stay out here, Panos! Ludwig heads on. Tommen. Wide to Brown. Brown's left foot sends that one up. Omaragbe in hot pursuit. Cherry pokes it out for a throw. Cherry came and cleared that one up. Well, Finney nowhere to be found. Quickly taken, can't find anyone in the same color shirt. And an AU throw off Janssen. Touch by Nakid. Cutler using some speed. Ethan Cutler with a couple tugs on Nakid. He gets it to Iroola. Iroola shot! Just wide, kept alive by Holdsworth. Left footed service, no one there for it. I tell you, the best chance that American has had this half, that ball right in front of the goal there for somebody to touch in. But again, American going at them, putting a lot of pressure, similar to what we saw against Bucknell in the second half. Ball played in with pace by Gillis to Ludwig's feet. And that has to be, and it is a penalty for American. Ludwig stays down. He is hurt. He's writhing on the ground, but he has won a penalty kick for the Eagles. I'll tell you, it's an interesting call, too, because you know, a, lot of, a lot of refs could have called just a dangerous play with that foot up, and up in the top there as opposed to down below. But either way, it is a penalty. It is a yellow card for Harris as well. And American has a chance to equalize with 15 minutes, 44 seconds left. Well, Ricky Brown faced has faced some this season. He's done well. He will have to come up big here as it's going to be Iroola, the taker for American. He's slow, Ludwig's slow to get up. He does get up. But talk about a player that lays it on the line for his team, Dale Ludwig. Yeah, he fought hard to get in front, to get in front to win that ball with the defender right on him. And actually, had a, you know, in a way, that penalty came because his touch got away from him up in the air. Ricky Brown facing into the sun. Will it affect it here with Irola stepping up to it? Referee's whistle. So he takes it quick. And a big save by Ricky Brown. He has kept his team in this. Wow, what a save. And that ball was hit well. That ball was hit to just inside. It was going just inside the post. Huge save. We just said Ricky Brown, we haven't seen much of him or anything. Now we've seen what he can do. He keeps Colgate ahead, one nothing. Corner kick for American. Irola now has to put this in, give AU a chance off the service. Harris hung him out to dry by giving up a PK. Header by Finney, in, and it's a goal for the Eagles. Chris Finney off the corner kick following the penalty, and they will pile in the corner, level at 1-1. Well, how about that? Right after the huge save, and Irola has the penalty save, puts in a tremendous corner kick there. Talked about it earlier, you got to give yourselves a chance. And by the way, who gets the chance? The guy that had been struggling at the other end uh, for, for American University, giving a couple balls away, scores a huge goal. Two defender, a defender scores two goals Friday. Now a defender scoring here. It's even. We got a 15-minute game now. And a big hug between Finney and Irola, the close friends. Finney making up for Irola's error on the penalty. Well, I gotta tell you, Irola hit that well. <laughs> I mean, he hit that well. That was that was quite a save by by Brown. Brown, not a very imposing keeper either. He's only six feet tall. I mean, we say only. Compared to some of these guys, he's big. But compared to some of the keepers we've seen in the league, not a big guy. Janssen lays it off. Stroud poked away by Finney. Harris now, the man on the yellow. Good defending by Matt Gillis, and it's out for a corner. Colgate looking to respond quickly. Well, he's got to be really careful because, again, that Stroud, that Stroud and the same thing, and it's three times now he's gone to his left foot for that. This time he gets blocked, but that, you know, that really didn't have enough numbers around there for American as that attack came for Colgate. Colgate corner to be taken by Stroud. Stroud with the end swinger, under 15 remaining. Good service to the back post. 
and headed away by Holdsworth and the Eagles tearing forward. That was a good challenge by Holdsworth as well. You know, the guy quite a bit bigger than him. He just did enough to get to the ball. A substitution for American Garrett Muzikowski coming on for Max Holdsworth. A little bit interesting of a change. Might see Naki drop into the midfield now. American substitution now leaving the match. Number eight, Massimo Holdsworth. 17 shots for the Eagles. They were slow to start this half and then hammering eight in a row, including the goal by Chris Finney. Yeah, and the thing is, it was with their back to the back to the wall. They had all those shots. And they need to take advantage of this now. You know that, you know, again, playing at home, getting that goal right now, the momentum on their side, they need to keep pushing that. And it really goes back to the same thing. While they're pushing at it, they have to stay organized in the back defensively. Vinny, when it's time to defend, do the right thing. Nakita is back into the midfield now. Stop. And an Stop. eagle substitution. Ninjo. Ninjo. Colgate's challenge is uh, again the third game in six days and now fighting really hard with a 1-1 game to 12 minutes, 45 seconds left. Well, Cutler got a lot of uh, time to rest in the second game in the other game. The Eagles could be in, has to be cleared away by Ulysian, hits it up. Stroud, Nakid battles through, and it's an AU throw. Poor touch by Gillis. And yeah, and then a foul right after this happens too, all too often, but again, the, you know, the throw in, uh, you'll put him under a little bit of pressure too. It would have required a really good touch. That's one of those tactical fouls. I mean, I don't know that he was trying to do it on purpose, but it, I don't think anyone's really going to be that upset with it. It slows down the play for a half second. Clock stopped. Stroud again going down. And Gillis going into the book. Two That's quick fouls. Two fouls in a row for Gillis. Yeah, he just got to be be smart. And whether that was a dive or not, he was still, you know, Gillis was still diving in to try to win that. And he's just got to keep his feet. If you think about it, after he had the bad touch up there, if he just keeps his feet, the ball may still be in that half of the field. Well, and initially I would have disagreed with the AU bench that I, I thought he got hit, but he's up really quickly. Usually if you get hit like it looked like Gillis hit him, you stay down for a little bit. Service by Cutler, headed away by Garcia. Stroud puts it in. And Vinny Barone with some quality defending, and it's an AU throw. Stroud throws it directly away from Chris Manet. <laughs> just giving him time to get back in position. That's one of those, just set it down. You don't have to throw it away and put yourself in danger of a yellow card. Nakid heads on, tugged by Skidari. Panos Nakid down the left shoulder. Neumann top of the box. Nakid serves it from across and into the side netting. Oh, I tell you, he'd like to have that one back. Clock stopped. As Nakid lost the boot there. He, he hit that one actually with his bare <laughs> left foot. That one might have been coming more into play had he had, had some grip from the boot. I feel like this crowd here is growing and growing with the intensity. Well, I'll tell you the one good thing about that too is that was a great switch by Dale Ludwig. And one of the things we talked about before is American has been tended to go all right down and in, in, if they're on one side, they stay there. And that ball, long switch, isolated uh, Nakid one-on-one -on -one, and he took advantage of it, unfortunately, not getting the cross in where he wanted. But AU had players getting in the box that time at speed. And that's the good sign for them. Goal kick now for Brown. Come on, White, win it! Lucas, get up! Win it! Back! Yeah. Ludwig heads it forward. And Ulysian away. Get you in. Get you in. Come on! Come on! 
bobble touch by Carl Brown. That's exactly what the Eagles were trying to do there is press. Stroud pressing Ludwig now. He's going to send it wide to Nakid. The Eagles clearly a team that just won't roll over and go away. I showed a lot of character coming back and fighting back and obviously scoring right away after the penalty kick got, got saved. What a boost for them and uh, certainly a, a, a challenge for Colgate. But hold on, there's uh, Vinnie Barone going in. He's going to send that one out for a th throw on the other side unless Nakid keeps it alive, which he can't do. That's one of the qualities of this Colgate team. Uh, Coach Ronning said since they played American in the opening game of the Patriot League where they lost three nothing here, he said that they've learned to deal with things better when things haven't gone well, moments in the game. And that's obviously the challenge that they have right now. Nine minutes, 45 seconds left in regulation. Played all the way back to Belanger. Sent up looking for Barone. Heads forward to Nakid. Come on, challenge! Gillis, come on, you need Shoot, to be able to go! Get him, get him, go! Jake, check your shoulder! Quality tackle by Vinny Barone, and the counterattack could be on. Side flag saves the Eagles as Stroud was going to be in one on one. Back in play quickly. Finney, the goal scorer, trying to get it into the final third. And again, he really just had feet there to play to. That was the wrong ball. Couldn't exactly tell whether he was going to Muzikowski or to Barone. Barone had with some space on the right. And they'll find Vinnie Barone now. Good turn by Holdsworth. Counterattack. Cherry gets a little something on it. Belanger stays on his line. Shot by Cutler. And the Eagles might have gotten away with him there. No power on that by Cutler. He went for placement, and it was too close to the keeper. He did, and exactly what we were talking about. They have to be organized in the back when they're in this attack, and they're, they're hoping to get a foul up here, but, but it wasn't called, and they need to keep playing and go at it and not get, not get uh, tied up on the field with whether it was a foul or not. And, you know, just that moment, and uh, they're very fortunate. Belandra just getting enough on it to keep that out of the net. Morrison back into the game for the Raiders, and it's going to be Kibu and Baluka replace Panos Nakid. The Eagles might be just giving him a couple extra minute rest. Both teams will want to do this in regulation. No one wants to go to extra time, especially given the fact that the first round game for the NCAA tournament will be on Thursday. That's a quick turnaround again. It is a quick turnaround, but I'll tell you what, neither one of these teams will complain about that if they get there. Holdsworth, service, Barone shot saved. If he gets any more pace on that, it's going right under Ricky Brown. He didn't quite get a hold of it. Did not get a hold of it, but an excellent ball in. And once again, what we're seeing is American has players running in the box right now. And that defense Colgate was so good at for most of the game is opening up with those balls and those runs. That's going to stop the clock. Vinny, next one. Next play, Vinny. Next play. I'll tell you, if he's going to stop the clock at this stage and not give a card, I think that's a mistake. You know, AU wanted to play that and get going. You can talk to the guy without stopping the clock. Service by Belanger. Ludwig uses his strength, powerful legs. And Barone can't get inside Morrison. And a counterattack could be on Cutler. Still Ethan Cutler, right footed strike, parried away and cleared by Jake Garcia. 
right idea by by Holdsworth looking for Barone. And the Eagles really need to be careful here. Both those chances by Colgate coming after the Eagles had possession of the ball in the final third and just making a mistake. Good ball in the Mbaluku. Couldn't find some space. Uligian on him. Mbaluku. Fancy footwork, looks to turn the corner and out for a goal kick. Okay, good effort by Mbaluku and good defending as well to stay with him. He almost turned the corner on him, but you know, you have to be careful there, you know, not fouling him as well and giving them a good chance. Again, the Colgate's danger in this open field, and I think one of the keys for, for America in the entire game is making sure that they defend well in the open field, which means you have to be organized ahead of time. Landry been up to the task on those. High boot by Cutler. He's saying Cherry put his head down in for it. Ethan Cutler clearly doesn't want his collegiate career to be over as he's grinding out every minute of this match. I think it's safe to say he got a little chat from the coaches <laughs> saying, we're going to need you for 90 and maybe more today. Yep. Barone jumps too early. Holdsworth uh, put this one back all the way to the center back, Cherry. Gillis, Ludwig 1-2, and we need to play it in behind there. And again, these are the giveaways that have given Colgate these open field chances. Dangerous territory for Matt Gillis as he is already on a yellow card. Pagani, too big of a touch. Ludwig and him battling through, and they're able to get it back to the goalkeeper. Holdsworth. Morrison. Fene heads it straight up. Holdsworth not going to be able to keep it in play. Stroud switches the field to Allegian. Get back in it, Get in that hole. This is the first time in a while where Colgate has actually strung these passes together, getting into a bit of rhythm. Their whole attack has been on the counterattack. Headed away by Ludwig. Come on, Vinny! Holdsworth trying to turn the corner. He's going to lay this one off for Barone, who's just going to go over the top. Brown off his line. Good first touch. I don't think that was the touch he intended, but not bad. No, he did excellent there. And again, the, the clearance giving a chance. Get inside him, Tim! Fene going to go up the line. Barone in the, the center of the park to Ludwig. Are you kidding me, guys? Just play two touch. Make sure, Jake! Behind him! Jake. Behind him! Flick on by Holdsworth. Max Holdsworth doubled it. Good job by the freshman. He was a little slow to come out on Friday, but a good job by him. And a shot goes down to the corner. Ricky Brown to it. So you just couldn't get enough on it. I tell you what you're seeing right now, Nick, is, is, is two tired teams as well, and that's why we're seeing some of these passes off and you know, some of the decisions not being what they would like to be. Minute and a half left in regulation. Barone nowhere to be found, and luckily that passed too far in front of Ethan Cutler. Yeah, Barone certainly, uh, you know, should, should have got himself in a position to not allow that ball to go forward. Now, 
Good touch by Stroud. Cutler. Actually, excellent touch by Stroud in his turn there as well. Very impressive player. Cutler walked out of the play. Mbaluku space in front, down the left side. Minute remaining now. And not able to link up on the German connection there. Tim Neumann and Kibu Mbaluku. One final counter attack. Pagani. That's got to be seen out for a goal kick. And, and again, that play on the other side with Neumann trying to get it in behind. Again, maybe you just want to get that ball into the box at this stage. You know, it wasn't the seconds ticking off the clock. And as they are right now, 15 seconds left. And that looks like it's going to be it for regulation. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Tied up at one, the penalty by Ethan Cutler, and then the goal by Chris Finney. We'll take a quick break here on the Patriot League Network. We'll be back after this. All knotted up at 1-1 and headed to extra time. Again, this is the men's soccer final on the Patriot League Network. I'm Nick Pappas alongside Keith Tabasnik and a hard-fought contest in the regulation. Well, you know, I, I mentioned earlier, I thought these were the two best teams in the Patriot League in the final. They're certainly playing the best soccer at the end of the season as you're supposed to and, you know, not disappointing, uh, you know, the crowd in terms of uh, the end-to-end -end and the excitement of the game and American University showing what they showed the other day, coming back being down one nothing late in the game and equalizing it and going into overtime now two ten minutes golden goal and it is golden goal so the first team to score in a in. punching their ticket to the NCAA tournament and if it is still level after the two ten minute periods of extra time we will go to a penalty kick shootout Eagles with a strong second half, 11 shots in the second half, nine in the first. They are out shooting the Raiders 20 to eight. But of those eight, Colgate has had many, many chances. Well, they have, and you know, they've had those chances coming in the open field. Uh, the goal again, uh, you know, streaking that with the, with the cross, and you know, he's been really dangerous for them all over the place. And I think when he gets in the attack, they've got a really uh, key on, on forcing him not to get the foot, three left-footed crosses that he's got in. They've been very dangerous. But it's really come off uh, more off uh, American University Eagle mistakes in the attack, giving away easy balls, unpressured uh, errors, I guess you would say allowing open field attack for Colgate. A couple big saves by Belandra on those. And we'll talk about big saves. The big save on by Ricky Brown on the penalty kick for the Eagles. They did bounce back only about a minute later, but a great penalty kick save by the veteran keeper. Big switch looking for Iroola, and it's going to be Brown to the top of the 18 to come get it. He had to come out all the way to the top for that because the pace of Iroola, he would have been there for it if Ricky Brown had stayed on his line. Yeah, and really not a bad idea at all to play that ball. You know, Iroola isolated one-on-one uh, -on, -one on this side, a little bit better ball that gives him a chance he may get in. Cherry pops it straight up in the air. Hart flicks it on. Game going end-to-end -end right now. Neither team connecting a pass. Stroud looking behind for Cutler. It's going to be played all the way back to Belanger. Cutler still in pursuit. And I think the Eagles got away with him there after a poor contact by Lucas Belanger. There they did, yeah. The pass back to him wasn't the easiest to deal with and then didn't get it up and going. But fortunately, right to an AU player. Get in there, in. Belanger just saying, send it up the field. Bounces around in the box. Harris away. Chris Finney into the feet of Holdsworth. Holdsworth space in front. Irola on the right wing. Can he get there in time? Serves it across. And just behind Panos Nakid as it's Omaragbe, the first one to it. Counterattack could be on now for Colgate. Looking forward to Zach Pagani, who had an incredible goal in the semifinal. And he can't get hit a foot to it to settle it. Yeah, he did, and in the semifinal on a counterattack as well, you know, for that goal. And boy, what a good ball that was in. You know, anybody gets to that ball, they redirect it into the goal. And it's a good play by American on that attack, forcing the issue. But again, while they're doing that, they have to stay organized in the back. 
Long throw into the center of the field. Brown looks upfield, finds no one but Michael Cherry. Chris Finney. Fasano holds worth now, finds looking for Hart, doesn't quite find him. Ball in behind. And Brown off his line for it. What an opener to his college account that would have been for Mark Fasano if he could have gotten any touch on that. No, exactly. And I think you're right. I think that initial pass may have been to Hart as well. And he, you know, he let it go, and he was in a good position if he wanted to have a go at that. Punt to the corner. Now Bulegian has to send that one straight up, headed on by Harris. Her er, Cutler against Garcia. Good opportunity now. Yeah, so America need more players around the ball when it's isolated on the That's foot right. of back, players like Cutler right there, and he was kind of one-on-one -on -one over there, not enough players getting back. Don't get smacked. Stroud, good space for Jared Stroud, serves a bouncing ball, and Belanger going to come off his line to get it. And that's exactly what Stroud did on the other side to his left foot. You know, just a hesitation and goes and gets, uh, you know, stretches the defense out by getting, uh, getting around the outside of the defender. And on, other way, move it, simple. You see Dale Ludwig to Panos Nakid. Good first touch by Nakid. Played back to Garcia. And you can really see the tired legs of both teams. Neither team pressing the ball right now, just kind of walking around until they have to make a run into the box. Uh, I think you're absolutely right. And a lot of energy spent, you know, uh, again, you know, Colgate on three games in six days, American having to chase two games in a row, spending a ton of energy to do that. Outside the football to Ludwig. Ludwig in behind for Irola. Cleared away by Tom and right into a teammate. And well done by Michael Cherry to just get into the body of Pagani and force him to take a poor first touch. Turn and go. Okay. Holdsworth runs through a challenge on Harris. Max Holdsworth's got to take a shot from distance and a shot well over the top. Yeah, well over top, and he's kind of going sideways there. He had to look up, and again, it's just like in the in the first half. You know, if he just takes that extra touch and goes at the defender, it might be better. That substitution now is Abdel Sonogo going to come in for Zach Pagani. Abdel Sonogo. No, you got to keep it. Look to the right side here. Fene with a good win on the header. Good step by Michael Cherry. Excellent step by Cherry. Now they keep giving away unforced balls there. He came from an offside. Hooked up the line. Stroud. Another dive. Another dive. Another dive. Another freaking die! Stroud selling that one. He's selling that one, I tell you, but he's been difficult to stop. And, uh, you know, it's just got to keep the feet moving on the defending there. And uh, it was interesting because the referee wasn't calling that. And then all of a sudden he gives the call. And now Colgate with a very dangerous uh, situation here. Obviously, with just a golden goal. Cutler, the man over it. He can serve quite a ball from an area like this. Good service, headed away by Garcia, but a great ball in. Uh, good pressure by Hart, and again, uh, a time where Colgate kept that ball in, and Cutler, uh, if it was a better ball back to him, uh, would have been isolated out wide. 
It's going to be Sonogo to take the throw in. Interesting decision to not put Stroud on this long throw. Standing inside the covered bench now, giving himself as much room for it as possible. Long throw here, headed away by Fene. And Cutler pulls down Fasano. Yeah, Fasano getting in good position there too. And, uh, you know, easy call on that foul on Cutler. He's had quite the accumulation of them today. <laughs> yes, he has. If you we, had, if you had a foul it, out, you, he'd be in trouble. We, we've said his name for good things. We've said his name for bad things today. Sent long by Belanger. Cutler up against Garcia. Neumann coming back to support. Cleared out only as far as Cutler again. Great positioning by Tim Neumann. And it'll take a touch off him, throw in for the Raiders. One minute remaining in the first overtime period. One minute. One minute remaining in the first period of extra time and a long throw. Cherry climbs for that one, heads it away. And Irola numbers down, but he'll just try to get it up. And the attack's still on, 30 seconds remaining. Need help, Max. Get back in. Get back in. Service in, dangerous service. Ethan Cutler is going to set that one down for Omar Agbe. Who can be the hero here? Brown in a touch over the bar, Lucas Belanger, big save. It was a big save, not much time left to see if they get in. That all came from Iraola trying to go one verse three or four instead of just holding the ball. Seven, six, Quickly taken five, and touch over the bar again. That one would have been going in, I think. But I think that'll right. be the first period of extra time. We will take a quick break back for the second period of extra time after this on the Patriot League Network. Two overtimes, what it took the Eagles to get to this final, and they will hope to get through this final in two overtimes today. No one wants to see go to penalty kicks, either team. Colgate did it in regulation in the semi. They might have had a little more rest despite start, the later start on Friday. No, absolutely, and I, I tell you, that the big thing for America, is they, have to, they have to eliminate those uh, unforced errors in the attack, because every time it seems to happen, and they're happening you know, about 40, 40 yards out from goal, 50 yards out from goal. Every time it happens, Colgate is getting an open field opportunity where they've looked dangerous, and then they've kept it in there. And uh, AU just needs to get that ball moving a bit quicker, you know, put a little bit more pressure on in behind uh, the Colgate defense as well and try to maintain it there. But, you know, both teams are uh, putting everything they can to this to try to get the automatic bid for the Patriot League. Well, and we, as we said earlier, if it does make it through this period, it will go to penalties. And I think if you're the Eagles, you don't want to see that, especially because Ricky Brown coming through into that with some encouragement after he made a huge save on a penalty. The shots have been the difference with especially 22 by American, yet they haven't been able to convert much anything. No. Not many on target, and the corner by the Eagles, the difference despite Colgate having more of those. Yeah, well, but, but the positive thing for America is all three corners came, uh, you know, late in the game. It was a, you know, had the goal for the corner kick as well, and a little bit of pressure, but this is a, as even as you get right now going into these uh, to the final overtime period. Hey, Joe, get on your phone, Joe. As we said, Ricky Brown, big, coming up big. One of his saves on the penalty kick. Clock stopped. 13 seconds in. Tune in! Tracy was going up to challenge for the ball. And trainers will be summoned onto the field. I think he might have just maybe caught a little bit of a push and come down the wrong way. Yep. We'll see what happens, whether he's able to stay in the game or not. But of course, right now, uh, you know, you're not going to want to play for very long down a man. 
if you have to bring him out to check him. Well, he does have to come out at least for a second until the first touch, given the fact that he was tended to by the trainer. Well, Joel Hart backed up, walking off to the side, and we'll see what decision is made. And Kibu and Baluku are going to come back into the game for Hart just because, like you said, the Eagles don't want to be a man down because 20 seconds, 30 seconds is the difference between going to the big dance and going home. Yeah, anything's a difference there. And you, you, Again, you don't want to wait till you get out here to try to figure it out. And obviously, Joel got hit pretty hard. You see him walking off the field with the trainer. Just 13 seconds into this final overtime period. Both teams looking for that golden goal to take them to the big dance NCAA tournament selection show tomorrow afternoon. The Eagles made it to a Patriot League final last year up at Colgate and then had to take the five and a half hour bus ride home after losing 2-1 to Lehigh. Neumann space in front of them. Played into Muzikowski's feet. Not quite the first touch he would have wanted. Jack Dickens into the game. I didn't even notice that one until just now. Sonogo and a quality challenge by Dickens, but Mbaluku unable to handle the pace of the pass into his feet. Long throw coming up, and they're sending the big guys up. I tell you, it's quite a deep place to get that throw, but they're clearly getting it in for a flick on. You got to stay with your second runners. And a lot of confusion. No one got it, but thankfully for the Eagles, it bounced through, and Belanger able to get it. That might be the most dangerous play we've seen in overtime, even though there was no shot on it. Yeah, well, just look at it. If you just look at the shadows too, you can see that that, that sun is going right into the into the eyes of the defense of the Eagles' defense. So putting that ball in there like that does create a lot of things. You said it looked like people were a little confused. Probably didn't see the ball. Cutler. Battles through the challenge from Dale Ludwig. Cuts it outside for Sonogo. Numbers coming into the box for Colgate. Stroud. Big switch. Good touch by Omaragbe. And force all the way back to Elysian, who's going to serve this one in. Fene heads that one straight down. That one took an awkward bounce for him. Yeah, it was well done by him staying with that ball. It was very difficult as it came in on the bounce. Stroud called for the foul. A little bit of confusion. Who's taking this free kick for American? Uh, it looks like Belanger coming up, so we obviously know this is going to be put into the box. And you know, a lot of times, AU is the type of team that they'll put it down and they'll play it and try to bring the team out. But the, since they have not been that sharp lately, uh, you know, tired legs, maybe this is the way to go. To Ludwig alone. Flicks on. Muzikowski sends it back. And Oberg clears it away for the Raiders. Good turn by Sonogo. Decent recovery by Chris Finney. Now a long ball over looking for Sonogo. He'll get past Finney. Can Finney stand him up here? Stroud coming into the box. Late runner by Omaragbe, and they're forced all the way back to Oberg. Out to Stroud. Omaragbe on the back post. Cutler right at the PK spot. Shot from Stroud right into the welcoming arms of Lucas Belanger. Yeah, with decent defending actually by, by American. You know, they didn't bite and everything, but Stroud just finds that little bit of space that he needs to get the balls in. It's been crosses that time on a shot. 
But Landry going to roll this one out and take as many touches as they'll give him until he sends it straight up the field. A lot of contact, no foul called. And another ball by Finney into Dale Ludwig. You just don't, you just can't figure that out because I mean, it, it doesn't matter if it's your own player, if he's right in front, the ball's not going through. Despite the fact that he is the goal scorer and is the reason in it, Chris Finney not having a fantastic game here in the Patriot League final. So again, with this uh, this sun going directly at the American University defense, uh, you would expect Colgate to be putting this ball straight in there. Really is a difficult sun right now. Short service, failed clearance, and a goal kick. The captain, Tommen, appealing for it, saying it was off of Dale Ludwig, but not the call the AR saw or the center ref, as Garrett Muzikowski going to come off to, and Holdsworth on for him. will put up, put Nakeed up top. Looks like Holdsworth also going in up top. There he is. He's pushing up there as well. So trying to find some combination that's going to get them that goal to win, get them into that elusive NSA tournament. It's 2004, the last time for American University. See another long throw, I'm sure, here for Colgate. Four minutes left in the second overtime period. Now, Key's got to get back in and defend this. Uh, you've got so many guys showing short. They've gone long every time. If that short throws on, if they want it, they'll go long into the box. They give up a corner kick there. There's Dale Ludwig fighting to get that ball. A U bench uh, asking for a push or a hold. And now they just have to defend this now. And every time Colgate has these dangers with their big guys in. Eagles putting all 11 men in the box to defend. Tommen with some space, that not a good ball. Oh, Maligan. And out, still, ball stays in. Stroud still with the ball at his feet. Second service. And by some miracle, Carl <laughs> Brown doesn't get ahead to that. He used an expletive, I think, as he, was, as he knows that that was the game winner if he gets any touch on the ball. Well, you know, I, I have a feeling he didn't expect it to get there either, and so he gets caught uh, just a little bit uh, frozen, and by the time he realized that it was too late, but, man, that ball was just sitting there. And, you know, again, uh, the, it was very clear. He hit this ball to the far post, hit it, head it back across, and hope somebody gets in. Well, it's, that's U8 stuff, be on your toes, because you never know when it's going to get through. Naki, chested ball, trying to get past Omar Agbe, who just has to put it out for a throw. The Eagles going to look to take this one as quickly as they can so that they can hope to catch the Raiders sleeping, but Colgate able to get set. Oberg sliding clearance. Garcia, the goal scorer of both goals in the semifinal. And that's good stuff by the Colgate back line to just hit it away. I'll tell you once again, that was a, exactly what's been happening. AU with the ball really unpressured and giving the ball away and Colgate now back in the attacking part. See, to me, the, the top player today for Colgate, throwing the ball in, Stroud. Well, you talk so much about Ethan Cutler, you almost forget about Jared Stroud. Huge tackle by Tim Neumann, and Holdsworth can't quite get to it. 
but it was the same thing. It's a, it's a giveaway without any pressure, you know, there at that time he has the ball, and that's a dangerous passes there American is getting away with. Sent long by Garcia. One minute remaining in the second overtime period. Rightful appeals for a foul, I think. Yep. Referees, assistant referee's first touch of the match. <laughs> also a giveaway. Tim, yeah, Tim Neumann, yeah, you can, he, he can barely move right now. Yeah, he, he looks, he's been holding a hamstring, looks to be cramping just a little bit. Both teams completely frantic in the way they're defending right now. Yeah, in reality, you know, at that stage, you know, there's a, seconds ticking off, just get it in behind right now. I mean, really just hope for a mistake. Failed clearance by Oberg. Goes only as far as Neumann. Ten seconds left. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three. And two, we are headed five, to penalty six. kicks. The lottery that is PKs here in the Patriot League final. We'll take a quick break. Be back on the Patriot League Network after this. Back on the Patriot League Network and ready for penalty kicks. Probably the biggest surprise, Will McCrate for the Eagles, seeing his first collegiate action in the final in the penalty shootout. That's what he was in the roster to do in the 22 man, and that's what he's going to have to do today. It's amazing. I mean, that must be like, you know, when you're a kid and you're just playing, doing stuff by yourself, and you're picturing, you know, your imagination, like, I'm going to be going in, I'm going to score the winning goal as a goalkeeper, I'm going to be the guy to go in and save the day for the team. And this is his chance here, a uh, six foot six. A big presence in the goal, and look at the, the difference between him and, uh, and and Brown on the other team. Of course, Brown showed us his quickness and his save of Irola's goal during regulation. It's going to be Cutler to take the first penalty for the Raiders. So the game goes down as a 1-1 tie in the record books and. To see who advances for the Patriot League Championship and for the automatic bid into the NSA tournament. One team from the Patriot League this year will represent them in the big dance selection show tomorrow afternoon and see if it is the Raiders or the Eagles. Well, Will McCrate. You got to give it to him. He's earned this chance. He stays after practice every day. And it's going to be Cutler stepping up against him. Cutler calm and collected again on his PK against Belanger. Big Will putting his arms on the crossbar, trying to rattle the veteran. Experience versus size here. He goes to the left side, and that first one's in. Yeah, and doesn't matter what size or size and experience in the goal, you're not going to get to that one well hit. Irola against Brown. Will he go the same direction he went the last time, or will he just try to bang it into the top corner? And talk about the, you know the head games that are going on right now, and in both of their minds, you know, uh, with that exact question. Again, Irola hit a really good one last time. Irola takes a quick and in off the post and in. And what a shot that one was. He went down the, and again, Brown guessed correctly, but just over the right hand. But I was going to say that. I mean, that's a, Brown wasn't far off of that one as well. He did guess correctly, but another great shot. No keeper's going to save either one of those. Zach Pagani. The second taker for the Raiders as every fan here at Reeves Field on their feet. Zach Pagani. Pagani gave, had the game winner against Loyola, and he will look to put one away here. McCray goes the right direction, but another perfectly hit PK. And that one getting over the top of uh, McCray's reach, which probably doesn't happen too often, but as he was going to the side, uh, couldn't get the arm up in time. Jake Garcia. Jake the hero for American University on Friday with two goals. 
We've been the game winner in overtime to get them to this spot. The last shootout on Reeves Field went in favor of the Army Black Knights in the 2014 quarterfinal. Cool and collected and placed into the back of the net. Placed Bob into Brown. the back of the net, not necessarily into the corner, but Brown going the, wrong, the, the other way, as I think you were just about to say. <laughs> Next for Colgate, number 11, Colin O'Neill. Colin O'Neill. Colin O'Neill kind of quietly had a really good game today. I mean, he sat in that uh, defensive midfield spot and just covered a lot of ground, and he really kind of kept everybody uh, t uh, together. Helps, helps, does all the work that allows his attacking players in front of him to do their job. Go, Will! McCrate. It's a big save, Will McCrate, and that's what he was put in there to do at 6-6. Six, six. And the question is, Brown equal to it, or will the Eagles stumble? It is in their favor now after the 6-6 six, six keeper gets down very quickly to that one. Garrett Musikowski. Left footer, one of the few lefties on this team, along with Irola, the first kick taker. And places that one into the bottom left. Brown caught going the wrong way again. So advantage to American University going into the fourth round. It's theirs to lose now after Will McCrate makes the big save. Aram Uligan coming up, the sophomore from Needham, Massachusetts. And Uligian, a big boy, 6'5". Six, uh, six Probably the only player on the field that's even close to McRae's height. <laughs> Well, you look at what McCray's doing, and that, that shows experience. He's taking the time, fixing his shin pads, <laughs> just giving a little bit of time to psych him out, and the classy slow roller. He, he knew that McCray was going to be going down, just rolled it right into the bottom corner. Yeah, he didn't take any time. The second that whistle, uh, whistle went, he was on there knowing where he was going, but still advantage to American right now. Chris Finney, the goal scorer that took it to extra time, that took it to penalties. He's been practicing them in training, and hopefully that practice pays off here as the Eagles are on top by one right now. Right down the middle. Right down the middle, yes. You're certainly anticipating that Brown's going to be going one way or the other. That's the type, you know, you think a goalkeeper stands still, it hits him. But Finney gets that, and we're down to here. A save, and it's over. And it is Brown, goalkeeper versus goalkeeper. That shows the confidence they have in him. They, he's clearly been taking penalties in practice with the other goalkeepers. And can he keep his side alive? Or can Will McCrate, the freshman, the novice of sorts, having not played a minute until this penalty shootout, take the Eagles to the Patriot League tournament for the first time in 12 years? The crowd is making it as hard for Brown as they can. And just wow. past McCrate, he went the right way. He did, he did, I'll tell you what, it was a teaser there too, because I think as he's going, he's probably feeling like, I should get this when it went by him. He, I definitely should have had that, but still, one shot here for the Patriot League title. And it's all on the shoulders of Max Holdsworth, the freshman out of London, England. If he scores, They'll be through. If he misses, we're going to six. And 
And a big save by Ricky Brown keeps it alive for the Raiders. Well, and Brown had left early to the side and he gets it with the feet. They're calling on McCray now to make another big one. Oliver Harris, the sixth penalty taker. As you see Muzikowski winding up the crowd. McCray goes the wrong way and it is the Raiders on top again. A miss by American and Colgate will punch their ticket. It is Dale Ludwig. Patriot League Midfielder of the Year coming up to take this one for American. No shortage of excitement as Ludwig Mullet in full flow steps back to take the penalty. And Brown saves it and Colgate is through to the Patriot League has won the Patriot League Championship on American's turf, and that is it. The Eagles' season is over, and the Raiders are through. It's just a, an amazing game, an amazing storyline with uh, Colgate now 6-0 in uh, advancing from the Patriot League uh, Championships. They'll be going to the NSA tournament. American University fighting back to get into this game and with the chance to put it away and advance, but they do not, and we'll have to look to try to do this again with an outstanding team that they had this year. And that will do it for us here as we see this final scene of the Patriot League tournament and the Patriot League men's soccer season. Colgate wins this one in penalties after a tie of 1-1. For all of us here at the Patriot League Network and my partner Keith Tabasic, I'm, saying, I'm Nick Pappas saying so long as the Raiders go to the NCAA tournament.